Hi guys and welcome back to the show. Today we're starting what is for me a huge project. It's going to be a media stand for my Bang & Olufsen LP player. It's going underneath my TV and I want a mission style inspired build with a little bit of a Scandinavian twist. So let's not waste any more time and get right down to this. Luke, I am Nomad Makes. So I started the design idea with a little bit of green and green inspired, but it felt too busy for our tiny apartment. So I wanted something more in a stickly style and I'm really inspired by, you know, the tables and Morris chairs and that kind of craftsman furniture. But I find that kind of furniture a little bit too massive, again, for our tiny apartment. So what I wanted to do with this design was to slim it down a bit and also I want to brighten up the colors a little bit. So that's going to be the Scandinavian twist to this design. That being said, I'm going to start by selecting the lumber and looking for the type of grain that I want. Because, I mean, you can do a lot with finishing, but really I think the direction of the grain and what kind of grain you're looking for should be with you from the start of the project. And the parts that I really want to draw your eye in this design are the rails or the stretchers. This is the design I came up with in Fusion 360. I have since added three ribs on each side, so that is not included in the 3D drawing. There are four drawers and a cupboard in the middle. For the cupboard I want to make a frame door and wrap it in speaker felt, as I want to put a Zeppelin mini speaker in there. I haven't settled on a design for the drawers yet, but I'm leaning against book matching the upper and lower drawers. I would like to mention that the lower rails are slightly wider than the upper ones, and that the lower drawers are slightly taller than the upper drawers. I'm trying to introduce that shaker slimness without making the lower drawers visibly taller. When I was happy with the design, I 3D printed it on my Ender 3 3D printer in order to get a better feel for the proportions. Notice that when I'm inspecting the boards, I'm not only looking at the face, I also check the end grain. Stay with me and we will get back to why a little later, because it is quite important. So that was a reject. And that was a maybe. Okay guys, so let me bring on board on what I'm doing here. I've basically gone through all of my lumber, which is around 50 cubic feet, I think. I'm sorry, 50 board feet. And these are the ones that I think I can get something out of. <laughs> I have some to maybe it's down here. When we're talking about saw direction, we're not really talking about how the wood is actually sawn because all of this is flat sawn. When I'm talking about saw direction, that would be flat sawn, quarter sawn or rift sawn. We're actually talking about the direction of the growth rings. So if you can see the top one here, the growth rings are running more or less horizontal in this area. Look away from this area, it doesn't matter. So this part of the board we'd consider flat sawn. Then if you look at the board in the middle, where the growth rings are running more or less 45 degrees 
to the flat side of the wood, we'd consider this rift sawn. And finally, on the bottom, where the growth rings are running more and more or less perpendicular, we'd consider this quarter sawn. So why is this important? You can see the the shapes we get here. If this board was larger, they would be go, going like this. These are called cathedrals. And the cathedrals, well, they will draw your eye, basically. And for some parts of the wood, like the legs, we don't want that. You Maybe you want cathedrals on the top or in the panels, but you don't want it on your legs in general. This is an example from a local cafe. These otherwise nice looking chairs have those cathedrals running along the legs and they really draw your eye. These would have looked a lot better with straight grain here. But then beauty is in the eye of the beholder and you know everyone loves their own brew. So when we're talking about the legs and the reason why rift sawn is desirable for the legs is that when you have rift sawn you're likely to have a straight grain so straight grain running like this on both sides so this face here and imagine that we we rip this and there you'd have a face here as well so rift sawn wood gives you the ability to have straight grain on two sides that are perpendicular or 90 degrees to one another. And finally, there's the quarter sawn wood, which gives us, for oak, these wonderful ray flex you see here, that can be very beautiful. And also it gives you very straight grain. So it's perfect for the rails and styles of a project. My first priority is the legs, and that is because I want rift sawn wood for the legs. So I found an area here that is more or less rift sawn, and you can tell that the grain in this area is quite straight. We have some ray flex, it's a little bit dirty, of course, but I want eight of these parts plus two in reserve because I'm bound to screw something up. A little bit of a knot up here, but that's going to be fine for this part. And I'm staying away from the from the sapwood here, only taking the heartwood. So that is one leg. Has nine to go. So next on my priority list is the lower front rail. I've written back rail on this because of this knot here. I can possibly use it because there, there will be an, an arch here and depending on how, how that will interact with this area, this, this is a, a candidate for the front rail. And the reason why the, the lower rails is, are my priority is that because they are the most visible. The, the top will kind of hide the, the upper rails a bit. Now this area here is too short to yield me the, the lower front rail that I'm looking for, but I think I can fit the two lower side rails here and they are the next priority pieces. Especially like if you imagine the, the arch coming here to avoid that knot. So I think this area here will be good. So that, this part of the board will yield me the two lower side rails. So 
Two lows. I need one more for backup. That may not be the highest priority though. All right. I think we've found a good candidate for the the lower front rail. There's a little bit of sapwood here. That will disappear once we add the, the arch here. So the grain is fairly straight. It's a little bit of an area here maybe. I think we'll go for this one. Some beautiful reflex here. So I'm looking for the top front rail now. I've labeled this as back rail because there is a little bit of waviness here. We have a, these the side of these cathedrals and there's this sapwood inclusion. If I have to use this as the front rail, I can put this side against the, the top so it won't be very visible. Uh, we'll try to keep this as the back rail and I'll keep looking for a better part to use as the front rail. I had to pull down some of the boards that I didn't discard but kept in reserve to find the, the straight grain that I'm looking for. And I think I have an area here that is satisfactory. So this will yield me my, my upper front rail. Come on, shape up. I may not have said it before, but all these parts are oversized by 10 centimeters in each end to allow for snipe. And uh, also they're at least one to two centimeters oversized inside. And when I'm cutting this, I'll be cutting along the outside of the chalk edge. So that should give me more than enough meat to work with for each part. From this area, I've managed to find my two side rails. The, this board is fairly flat so on, but for some reason the it, the grain here is very tight and very straight. The only thing is this knot here, but like I said, I, will, I allowed for almost 10 centimeters on the side of each of the templates to allow for snipe. So I think this will be good. Next on my priority list is the horizontal drawer dividers, and I need two of these. And I'll be able to get one from this area here, which has really nice and straight grain. It's, it's kind of rift zone, this area. I'll get one from here and I'll get some, some of these really nice ray flex. I think that will look good. The last of the visible parts... Oh, where's Vader? <laughs> Where did you go, Vader? Ah, oh, there he is. The last of the visible parts are the... Vertical dividers, you can call them styles, but I'm calling them vert vertical dividers, and ribs, which are going to be these craftsman decorative elements on the side panels. I don't know if they're called ribs, so if you know, please tell me, but until then, I'm calling them ribs. And I need 10 of these. I haven't decided the, the width of the ribs yet, so I know they won't be wider than the vertical dividers, at least I'm cutting them to the same sides. And like always, we're looking for quite straight grain. I think we'll start here. Yeah, there's a little bit of bow in this area. Just say rib. One.
now I'm done marking out the all the visible parts so I'm now looking for inner structure and I don't I basically don't care about the grain direction in these I do want to avoid uh, the pith and knots and cracks of course but sapwood inclusion and grain direction really doesn't matter now. As you probably understand, I am quite far into this project already, but I'll show you some sneak peeks here. There will be several videos in this series, but if you want to stay up to date on my projects, make sure to give me a follow on Instagram. It's Nomad Makes there as well. But again, that is it for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave a thumbs up. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. Should you want to support me, you'll find a Patreon link and affiliate links to products I use and recommend below. If you don't feel like that, you can help by telling your friends about the channel on your social media of choice. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.